This is Unit 8A, Lesson H, Day 2, Finding X and Y Intercepts. The objective of the notes is by the end of the video, um, you'll be able to find your X and Y intercepts from the graph. You'll be able to graph a linear equation using intercepts, and you'll be able to graph a linear equation that's a special case. The key terms of this section are just X and Y intercepts. Okay, so we're going to use, as I'm talking about the terms, we're going to use the graph and kind of point out where they are on the graph. So the x-intercept is the point where a line crosses the x-axis. So let's look here for a second. So the x-axis is right here. So we want to know where this line crosses the x-axis. Okay, so it crosses it right here. And I know it's really hard to see, you can see it better on your paper, but um, the point where it crosses the x-axis is Four, zero. So when we're writing our x-intercept in, um, in terms of an ordered pair, we would write it 4, 0. You also might see x-intercept just equaling 4, because it's crossing the x-axis at 4. Okay, if we look at <coughs> now the y-axis, y-axis is where, or sorry, the y-intercept. Y-intercept is where the um, line crosses the y-axis. So let's look at that. So here's the y-axis right here. So we want to know where does that purple line cross the y-axis. And that is right here at 0, 2. I know it's a little easier to see on your paper. But at 0, 2, the purple line is crossing the y-axis. So that's what, how you're going to see it um, on quizzes, on tests, on your ho homework. In terms of an order pair, it would be 0, 2. Or you might see it as y equals just 2. Okay. So, kind of looking at the key terms and using it, applying it, um, the first example, we are going to just ask you to find the x and y intercept without using a direct graph, just using numbers, you know, just using our variables and our coefficients. So, to find the y, x and y intercept, what we're going to do is, we're going to make a little nice table here, and find our x intercept and our y intercept. And then we're just going to kind of use the cover method. So, I go back, oops. Go back and cover this. I'm first going to find my x-intercept. So I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover my y right now. So I'm going to basically say that 9x equals 18. And then I'm just going to simplify that. So I'm going to solve for x, so x is 9, or 2, sorry, x is 2. So as we said up in front, up in the beginning of this, our key terms, you're going to see the x-intercept as an ordered pair, or just as x equals 4. Well, here it's saying x equals 2. Now, if I had to write it as an ordered pair, I would write it to 0, knowing that the 0 is always going to, add, always going to be there in an x-intercept. Now, if I simplify the, or try and um, find my y-intercept, I'm going to erase it, and I'm going to cover my x. So if I cover my x, I now have an equation of negative 3y equals 8. And I'm going to simplify for my y, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, I'm sorry, 18, 18. y equals negative 6. So there's my negative 6, and if I had to make it into an ordered pair, it would be 0, negative 6, and that would be my ordered pair. Now, if you want to use this as a little like hint for yourself, make a little smiley face, so your I should be in the middle, your x should be on the, on the left-hand side for your x-intercept, your y should be on the right-hand side for your y-intercept, and you should have a little smiley face in the, in the middle. Okay, so those would be my x and y-intercepts. I need to write them as x equals 2 or 2, 0, and my y-intercept, y equals negative 6 or 0, negative 6. All right, so let's do that again over here. I'm going to make a table to find my x and y-intercepts, and then I'm going to use the cover method to simplify that a little easier. Okay, so I'm going to use highlighter here. I'm going to cover up my y completely so I have a nice, easy one-step equation. <clears throat> okay, so I have 10x equals 5. I'm going to simplify, divide both sides by 10. 
x equals 5 tenths, which can be simplified to 1 half. Okay, if we were to, we can either leave it as 1 half, 0, or you could write it in a decimal form if that helps you with graphing. You could do, or do that as well. well not 1.5, just 0.5. So now let's look at the y-intercept. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to now cover up my x to find my y-intercept. So now my, my equation for that would be 2y equals 5. I divide both sides by 2. y equals 5 halves which would be 2.5 if you wanted to put it in decimal and the zero goes first. Again, a little check. You want to make your little smiley face. Make sure your smiley face is in the middle. Your x, x is on the left-hand side. Your, right, your y-intercept is on the right-hand side. So your answer would either be x equals a half or 0 0.50 for your x-intercept and y equals 5 halves or 0, 2.5 for your y-intercept. Okay, you were going to leave the U tries for tomorrow in class. I'm going to move on to example two. Now we want you to graph using intercepts. So first, you need to find them, and then you need to graph them. Okay, so let's first find them. So this is exactly what we just did in our notes before, in the previous example. So I'm going to use my table to find my x and y intercept, just for purpose of ease of this. Homo tablet. I'm just going to X that out. So I'm going to cover up my y-intercept or my y and write my first equation. So negative 3x equals negative 6 divided by negative 3. My x is 2, which would get me a coordinate, uh, an ordered pair of 2, 0. And my y-intercept, I'm going to cover up my x, and I have 2y equals negative 6. Divide by 2, y is negative 3, so I have a point of 0, negative 3. I have my little smiley face there, I know I'm good to go, and now I'm just going to graph. So you're going to graph on this graph, I'm just going to um, change to a different graph to make it easier for you guys to see. So you're first going to graph, so I'm going to write, um, first going to graph 2, 0, and then you're going to graph. 0, negative 3 on yours. Okay, so your line should look something like that. <clears throat> okay, and go back to the notes. For example, 2b. I'm going to make my table to find my x and y intercepts. So to find my x intercept, I'm first going to cover up that y. Now this is nice and easy. I don't have to do any work. It tells me my x is right away. But I'm going to put it in an ordered pair so it's easier to graph. And then I'm going to cover up my x. Make sure that you don't forget to bring down that negative. Negative 6y equals 6. Do my one step to solve for my y. y equals negative 1. So I'm going to put that in an ordered pair. 0, negative 1. And my little smiley face. I'm good to go. So 6, 0, and 0, negative 1. You're going to graph on this graph here. I'm going to jump to my nice graph to make it easier for you to see. So 0, negative 1. Oh. Okay, 0, negative 1. And 6, 0. So your graph should look something like this on your note sheet. All right, and then jumping back to example 2C, here they're asking you from a graph, state the intercept. So I have to see, just like in my notes, all the way up above where I talked about the um, finding intercepts from a graph, wherever that line passes the x-axis and the y-axis, that's my intercepts. So looking down here below, I'm going to see for my x-intercept, I'm going to see where it passes that axis. 
Right on the x line, it passes right here at 2, 0. So this is my x intercept. And my y intercept, it passes right here on the y axis. And that is 0, 3. So these are my x and y intercepts from a graph. All right, and moving on to the last example, the U tries we're going to do in class. Moving on to my last example of graphing special cases. First one, 3a, it gives you just x equals negative 5. Okay, it's not giving you an equation before where it gives you an x and y. So how am I going to graph this if I can't find intercepts? Well, in this case, we're going to ask you to, to think of three points. Okay, three ordered pairs where you can graph them. Now we know that the x always has to equal negative 5. So I'm going to put negative 5 in the x spot all three times. And then I'm going to choose any three points here. So I'm going to do 1, 2, and 3. So negative 5, 1, negative 5, 2, negative 5, 3. So this is always going to be the same. Okay, and I'm going to choose any three points to find my... Um, to make my line. So I'm going to jump over to this graph. You're going to graph on your notes. I'm just going to jump over to this one. Okay. So I'm going to graph negative 5, 1. So negative 5, up 1. Negative 5, 2. And negative 5, 3. It makes a vertical line. As you can see. What is going on there? Okay. It makes a nice vertical line. So, if I jump back to my notes, and when I have a special case of an x, I'm always going to have a vertical line. And it's always going to cross the x-axis. Now, this is something you're just going to have to remember and practice, practice, practice. You will either do the, you'll always do the check of making three points and always putting the x in the x spot. And then you could always even know, you don't even necessarily have to do this if you remember, a special case x is always going to be a vertical line and always going to cross the x-axis. And if you think about the last unit we had, when we were looking for a domain, domain was x. And when we were searching for a domain, we always use that vertical line test. That might be another key to say, okay, domain, vertical line test, it's always going to be a vertical line. Now, if we look at B, let's take a guess. What kind of line do we think this is going to be? If X is vertical, what kind of line do you think Y is going to be? Okay, so think about that for a second. We're always going to encourage you to make three points. Now, Y is always going to be 4 in this case. So I'm going to put 4 in for my Y. And you could, again, choose any three numbers. I'm going to choose 1, 2, and 3. So if I went back to my graph, and I made my three points, okay, sorry, I made my three points of 1, 4, so I'm going to go 1 over, 4 up, that's my first point. 2 over 4 up, here's my second point, and 3 over 4 up is my third point. So as you can see, I have a nice horizontal line. So if I jump back to my notes, a y equals um, special case is always going to be a horizontal line. It's going to cross the y-axis. Okay, so those two things, and again, if you think about Unit 7, when we talked about range, and you had to find range on a graph, it was the Y. Okay, you always did a, like, you took that pencil and you went horizontally down or up to find the range. So think Y horizontal line. Okay? You will do the U tries in class of the other special case examples. And then on the bottom, as always, after watching the video, we want you to write down what you can now do. We want you to highlight what you still have questions on and what you're going to do to help yourself with answering those questions. See you in class.